Hello, and welcome to our very first Metaverse Culture Series experience, y'all. I'm Mimei Archibong. I've been at Meta for about 12 years now and lead new product experimentation group. So relevant for this audience and for discussion today, one of the things that my group has been spending a lot of time focusing on is, are there people and audiences that we have, and when I say we, I mean the tech industry, historically overlooked, underestimated, and to some extent undervalued, right? In my opinion, I'm talking about Black Americans that shape global culture, I'm talking about folks and entrepreneurs on the African continent, and I could go on and on and on and on and on, but y'all won't be on my soapbox right now. <laughs> <laughs> the other R is that it is long past time for the internet, right? And at some point, what will be the metaverse to really honor and to put the people who drive its vitality at the center. And I do think that it's us. I do think it's us that is driving the culture. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm going to throw it over to someone who probably needs no introduction <laughs> amongst us all, Danielle Young. Danielle's hey. an award-winning journalist, <laughs> has been known as the content queen, which Ooh. includes hosting weekly series like hashtag real quick <laughs> and creating and producing original series for Essence and The Root. Danielle, I'm loving your avatar right now. I'm throwing it over to you to get us going. <laughs> Thank you, Emir. I appreciate that. Can you introduce me for everything that I have going on? I got you. I got you. <laughs> Love that. Well, thank you so much for that. And welcome, everybody. I'm so excited um, to be here with y'all. Like, we are literally making history right now. We tend to be left out of the tech culture a lot of the times as we are culture creators. And that ain't right. So <laughs> we're going to talk about that and um, get to the root of that and um, understand how we can use this space to continue to be the amazing creators we are. So I want to go around the room and have us introduce ourselves. So I'm going to start with Paris, ladies first. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> My name is Paris, uh, Paris McCoy. I am a cinematographer by trade, creative producer and immersive technologist. I've been working in the immersive space for, I want to say roughly about four or five years now. Thank you, Paris. Welcome. Well, Thank you. Looking cute. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> okay, Jay. Uh, what's good, y'all? Um, Jay Ellis, um, actor, producer, writer. Um, I'm super excited about this. I think this is absolutely amazing. I, you know, I constantly am always thinking about the ways in which we can tell story and find new ways to tell story. And this, uh, the metaverse and all the opportunity that's in it, just seems like such an amazing place for like us to be able to extend black storytelling uh so i'm super excited to be here glad to have you jay hey i rock we rough and <laughs> stuff with my afro hey. puffs hey. <laughs> rashad we love the outfit we love the hair get, give it to us who are you okay wait, wait first i want your <laughs> I, was be the first I was gonna say like I make history, so I had to like make history. So I want to be the first person to say you're in first. Yes. <laughs> so, so, uh, mark that, mark that. Um, but I'm Rashad Lambert. Uh, I'm the founder of of uh, Forbes of Culture, which is I'm a community for Black and Brown uh, professionals and like creatives, or just Black and Brown people in general to convene and to share resources. I'm the senior vice president of Forbes and. I have a nonprofit organization and some other stuff. And I was the first person to say you're, you're uh, they started the trend. I had to get us going. Like you know, that. we good and like that. <laughs> what's up, Phil? Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, my name is Phil Lewis. Uh, I'm a senior front page editor at HuffPost. I really am passionate about black storytelling as well. So whenever I uh, get a chance to write, I'm making sure that our, our narratives are pushed in our news coverage. So I'm happy to be here, happy to be around such brilliant folk. Thanks for having me. Of course. Gabe, love to hear from you. I'm Gabe Gault. Uh, I go by a lot of things and I do a lot of things, but I label myself as an artist um, and art director as well. I do sculpting. I do, um, as of now, VR creating. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything, but it's been a, it's been a cool journey. Gabe's being yeah, modest, cool. um, yeah. but obviously we're, we're here <laughs> yeah. rallying around. He's we'll like, talk about me all day. So. Right. <laughs> and you guys, I'm Vivian Ewolefo Johnson. Um, I work with with Ime here at Meta. I lead our cultural moment strategy and our product equity communications. Um, I had a vision <clears throat> to launch our uh, Metaverse culture series as we're kicking off here during Black History Month in this all Black moment. I'm so proud to be a part of this. Um, and to be working with so many incredible and brilliant folks. Yesterday, we had a chance to have an exclusive look 
at Gabe's incredible experience that he's built out in Horizon Worlds. Gabe, I want to just kind of like hear from you a little bit on your inspiration and your vision and also like get some reactions from you guys about how you felt going through. For this exhibit, I wanted you to be able to experience that moment of Black history that you learn growing up and you're a part of it and you're you see it in books, you hear about it, you see like old footage, but this is now an opportunity to be able to truly interact with it. And it's an homage. It's something that we can jump into this world in Black History Month and pay respects. We were talking about the concept of Afrofuturism. Clearly, like Gabe's interpretation really leaned into some really specific sensational moments in American history. 1960s Memphis. How did you yes. get there, Gabe? Yes. Yeah. I thought that was a very uh, pivotal point for Black history. Just a lot of things that changed our lives for the better have gone down in that moment in time. So I thought that was the perfect place. I'm a big fan of kind of knowing where you came from in order to figure out where we should be going. So, mm. you know, I hopped into your world, Gabe, and I didn't know what to expect initially. Yeah. But the fact that you grounded the storytelling and the visuals in a time that are iconic, that tell some powerful stories, um, but also gave us a glimpse of what potentially could be created going out into the future, I thought was was, was pretty powerful. I grew up in um, Greensboro, North Carolina. So images of the sit-ins. <laughs> I too am from North Carolina. To I had, to, I had to, to do that. Pablo. But uh, <laughs> but um, you know, you grow up with you grow up with those images, and those images are really important groundings for for folks who are trying to aspire to figure out what we can do for the culture and how far we've come, mm -hmm. how far we have yet to go. So I think a lot of people would assume when a black artist comes into uh, the metaverse, they would create a bunch of futuristic things, but there is so much power in creating around history. And as we see a lot of our history get erased and mistold and all those types of things, it's really yeah. nice to be able to yeah. actively participate within yeah. our history. Yeah. Ime, I have a question for you actually. Yeah. I think, you know, where where there are black people, there are, you know, things that happen that may not can be considered safe for us. So as we continue to move forward and add a lot more culture into this space. How do we remain safe here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's two things. I think that mm -hmm. first and foremost, from like the people who are building the platforms, right? The people who are building the technology, thinking about this proactively, thinking about the responsibility that we have, thinking about how that shows up in the products that we build, the controls that we give people, how that's gonna be different for different types of people. That's like first and foremost. And so much of that is about representation. And you gotta have people sitting at the mm. table. Talk about this a lot. Like if you were to rewind back to the 90s, the information superhighway was being talked about and published <laughs> on top of magazines, right? We had no idea what would come of the internet. Not a lot of us were sitting around those tables thinking about what the future is gonna look like. Not a lot of us were trying to use these new tools and technology to build our own businesses, our own ideas, things to make us more mm. productive, things to allow our people to play. And now we're sitting here at this interesting moment where everyone's talking about the metaverse. Like, what is that? What the heck mm -hmm. is it? We could go around the room right now. We'd all have different definitions of it. Right. <laughs> Which doesn't matter, actually. What matters is that we're here around the room talking about it, trying to define it. Mm. And we could fast hmm. forward five years from now, but when that definition becomes crystal clear, when people see the Amazons of the futures or the Facebooks of the futures, right? My hope is that it's us that are helping shape that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is the most important piece. So when you fast forward then 10, 15 years, 20 years out, and we're all immersed in what is what will be the metaverse, by design, it has been designed in a way that is safe, that is secure, thinking about mm -hmm. our people, in addition to other folks, right? Top of mind, first and foremost. That's great. Just a couple snaps on that one. Right? I was, did y'all feel it? <laughs> so Phil, I want to go to you because, you know, as a journalist, as somebody who is a strong thought leader um, and has presence on the illustrious and elusive Black Twitter, how do you see us being able to create, because no one's ever been able to harness the power of Black Twitter and what we're able to do online with our, our social media. So how do you think we'll be able to utilize that within this space? 
Yeah, well, when Gabe was talking, something that came to my mind was accessibility. There's this way we can make entire worlds now on here and people can access it from their home. I think that that's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. And when to put it in context of Black Twitter, our stuff is, is just always up for consumption, uh, not necessarily by us. And we don't always kind of benefit from what's, what's going on. And so Black Twitter is always mm -hmm. experimental. It's always yeah. shifting. It's always moving. Uh, and so I'm really curious to see where this kind of like kind of where where this goes like where do, where does the metaverse like go <laughs> you know it's, it's really kind of a unique experience like what do memes look like here yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah. like how do we are how we able to interact with them i haven't just thought about like hearing that just made me think of like you know the twitter chatter that happens in a given show while it's airing mm -hmm. and like what does that now become in terms of like viewing together with people, you know, when you used to push characters on a phone and hit sin, now like yeah. I'm saying it in a room full of people that, well, that insecure, are- Insecure watch party on here would have been- oh, yeah, Insane. Been. <laughs> but it also would have allowed for us to be able to be a part of those watch parties, which, which I think is also such an amazing right. thing too, is like you could tap in during, you could tap in after, you know what I mean? And, and be a part of that experience as well, which I think is one of the things that we've loved so much about black twitter is that like we've obviously been able to watch it in real time while it's happening during the show and a lot of times we're together but we can't necessarily be with the folks who are watching the show with the fans yeah. who are watching the show yeah. yeah rashad as somebody who's forbes the culture <laughs> where do you see, you see what i did there how do you see this type of virtual world playing into the types of things that you're doing back in like the 80s and 90s when you looked at the future this is like blowing my mind. I know that as people are like talking or uh, like, like I keep looking around and y'all probably see me like, what is he doing? But I never <laughs> saw black people in the future, right? right. It, right. it kind of made me think as a kid mm. that there might not be black people in the future. Uh, you wow. talked about like, like Gabe's right. world, and you talked about like Afrofuturism and like the marriage of those two. Like, like I look at like Back to the Future and these are all, and, and all these iconic movies. I can't name any of the black characters. I can't think of, because we weren't like represented in this time. I always say that uh, the highest form of like inspiration is an example. And mm -hmm. just having an example of what we look like in the future as the avatars get better and as things kind of improve and we get like virtual do-rags, you know, all of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless, unless you're Phil and you come born naturally that <laughs> you way. Like we've seen avatars for some years now, right? In different yeah. forms, gaming and in different places. And there's so many times where simple black hairstyles, simple black features are not represented. How do y'all feel about your avatars and the representation? I loved the amount of uh, the different options of facial hair. Like I just was like, see, Jay, this like, beard is on. It's it's on something right now. But if you look at us right now, if you look at us right now, there's yeah. five different representations of facial yeah. hair or not yeah. with Emay, right? We got. Emay, he tried Jay a little bit. No, 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 no. Emay, no, no, no. don't let her gas you, because Danielle constantly tries to come for me. Well, what they need to know is during a tech rehearsal, Jay came in here with some Tyler Perry presents cornrows. How do I not? <laughs> Oh, no. How do I not Wait. come for that? <laughs> but as you were saying, we do feel good about the variety of choices. Yeah. And uh, do you feel culturally represented with the choices for your avatars? I, I feel like me personally, I feel like the hairstyles for women, for uh, black women or Afro styled hairstyles have gone come a very long way. I mm -hmm. remember doing some of my first avatars and there was not an option for anything that even remotely looked like locks or yeah. uh, Danielle Afro puffs. Those were definitely not there. Oh. I'm one for one, very excited about that. And then also too, it's just giving me inspiration about some of the clothing, like some of the clothing rep representation. I did see some different cultural um, clothing items in yes. there. Yes. And so I'm just waiting mm -hmm. for some, some, um, some wax fabrics, some very uh, different type of like black, <laughs> Black American across the African diaspora type of clothing options. I'm waiting for that. I think Rashad's point on kind of seeing visuals matter mm -hmm. is pretty mm -hmm. important. I want to make sure that we, I mean, y'all may laugh at this. We don't disrespect our man, LeVar Burton, who was actually in Star Trek. I'm, I'm sitting here in Oakland and it's hard for me not to, of course, give a shout out to what Ryan is doing, Ryan Coogler's doing. Yeah. And clearly the vision True. that he painted for a lot of folks in the next generation to see what is possible, to see a future Absolutely. that was very, you know, 
we, 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 can we get the one? I mean, okay, <laughs> okay. Wakanda, Wakanda, right? Yes. So <laughs> Brian is a really good example of what happens when you actually put people who represent the culture in positions of power to influence what gets what stories get told. Mm -hmm. And the conversation that we're having that I continue to push on is what technology gets built. So when we think about whether the technology we build is going to be inclusive or not, let's keep it real. Right now, we're all sitting with devices on our faces at home right now <laughs> that aren't accessible to everyone in the United States, right. let alone around the rest of the world. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the son of, of, of two Nigerian immigrants, and I think about what my cousins have access to and what they don't have access to. Forget about devices, basic, strong connectivity that could power a world experience like this isn't even their future for the next four or five years until more and more fiber gets laid. So from a Facebook or a meta perspective, you know, for years I worked on an initiative, you know, Facebook connectivity efforts to try to make sure that we could lay that lower level of the stack down. Yes, in rural parts and urban centers around the United States, but mm -hmm. you know, more recently trying to wire up the African continent to make sure that they can get to 4G, 5G connections and things that are going to be needed to power these virtual world experiences. Um, Ime, what do you feel like is the is the glue that is missing in between us being culture creators and the VR space? What do you think is that missing piece? I, I do think some of it back to this notion of just like access to devices. The real power of technology is not in like the technology itself. It's the people whose hands are wielding it and using it and touching it. And that, mm -hmm. that tends to always blow people's minds. You know, if you were here in the United States in like 2007, we were all geeking up because, you know, the, the earlier versions of smartphones had finally made itself to like the iPhone. While this was happening here in the U.S. and same time, 2007, if you were in East Africa, you saw M-Pesa launch. I don't know how many people are familiar with M-Pesa, but yeah. M-Pesa was the first version of mobile money. Mm. M-Pesa mm. came around. Mm. Before you knew it, you had thousands, if not even tens of thousands of people who were using mobile money in East Africa in 2007. Mm. Guess That's when awesome. mobile money became a thing that was way more mm. ubiquitous around the world, right? Facebook paid and it launched till 2015, I think. Google Pay wasn't until like 2013 or 14. Mm. So the future oftentimes is already being built and oftentimes already being built by us. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. yeah. So the question is, is how do we make sure that the next M-Pesa that's happening in some corner around the world and being wielded and like shaped by us from a culture perspective, that the world sees it faster than the world has sell some of the previous intuitions and kind of the innovations that, that have come from our, from our community. So I think it's both access and then also just us keeping a lens and knowing that, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's, there's genius evenly distributed. It's really the opportunity and are we seeing these folks everywhere? Yeah, and actually, I that made me think that. of the fact that I think even in this room here, there's some of us that are, I'm not even going to add myself to that group, that are complete experts in this world um, and that are totally early adopters. And some mm -hmm. of us are using this headset and in operating in VR for the first time for this conversation, right? Generally speaking, I would say not a lot of Black folks are playing around in this space or even no. understand VR. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've got a unique crew here of early adopters and, um, you know, tech elites, if you will. Um, but who else in this room is, you know, had just kind of popped open their headset and was stumbling around to figure out how to do this thing in VR for this Child, conversation? I'm still <laughs> stumbling. I mean, took my computer out. I'm just like, my note. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely like new yeah. and tech is mm -hmm. scary for me. I think it sometimes it puts up a wall and I feel intimidated. Yeah. Um, but to feel empowered by having someone like Gabe show us like what's possible. I yeah. think it offers a little bit more um, motivation to like, not master, but at least get myself into the space of trying and, and seeing what could work and then trying to see how it could work within what I do as a content creator. Um, right. Because this it gives us the ability, to, it feels like we can actually build Wakanda here and mm -hmm. have some really dope dynamic yeah. conversations and stuff. So I think um, being new to it isn't as scary as I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I know we get super inspired by obviously like we drive pop culture where people might be intimidated by technology. You're it's accessible when you kind of lean into pop culture. Right. So yeah. I think a lot of us are at the intersection of that. So like, you know, as we're kind of ideating here and we're, this is just the beginning, like how do we lean pop culture into this space, real pop culture, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think about, you know, 
we I think about a show like Insecure and I think about the time that that show came out and there may have only been like three or four other black shows on TV mm -hmm. at that point, really. I think Atlanta launched just either before us or just after us. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you had Empire was on the air, Scandal and How to Get Away. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Tyler probably had something on the air somewhere. <laughs> um, what I think is so amazing is like, you know, by by what Gabe showed us, I think it it made all of our minds go like, wait a minute, what yeah. what else can you do? What else can you build in this world? What else can you see, right? And so I think about like, when when you may have not, when there were only four shows, could we have created some version of entertainment or black show or storytelling in this space? And what would that mm -hmm. have looked like? And then does that then become, does that, you know, transcend the metaverse and then all of a sudden it becomes linear television as well? Or does linear television mm -hmm. move to the metaverse? Like, I think there's like such an interesting way of how storytelling and even I think about like a companion podcast, for example, is there now a companion metaverse show? that goes to a show, you know what I mean? I just think there's so yeah. many amazing yeah. ways that you can complement storytelling uh, uh, that we see traditionally in television and film inside the metaverse, but also create stories that are meant for this. You know, one of the issues with Negro Leagues, for example, is like no archival. Like yeah. you can't do a doc yeah. on it because there's no archival. If you want to do a movie, everyone in Hollywood will tell you it's way too expensive, mm -hmm. right? Like, because yeah. it's period. So like, what if you built the Negro Leagues inside of this? Mm -hmm. And now I get to see Satchel Paige, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At 47,000 million years mm -hmm. old, throw a pitch to Gibson who knocks yes. it out the park or whatever. And like, I just think that's so amazing too. Or what if the world that Marcus Garvey wanted to see was built in the metaverse? Mm -hmm. Like, what does right. that look like? Right. Yeah. Exactly. What does that look like? Because we've yeah. Never got an opportunity to see what that could look like yeah. and so yeah. i just think that like for me I, when i think of the storytelling i think about the barriers that have always been there and the stories we haven't been able to tell and now it seems like there are no barriers in this world yeah, yeah. oh to, to that point gabe as someone who has done this and yeah. will be doing this where do you feel like there are opportunities for creators to explore and to explore culturally uh, I just feel like again, like it's just endless. You can you can go backwards in time, you can go forwards in time if you're telling a history story, and you can create, like uh, like you were saying, like you could create a podcast room, you could create um, a workspace environment. Um, yeah, I I I feel like it's literally an, an impossible question to ask because you can just do everything um, as technology is just getting better and better. That's where I just see it going, like anywhere anything you can imagine you can either build it up with simple shapes or maybe there's already a application that allows you to do that uh, and yeah. explore that space even farther i started out in camera um in traditional filmmaking and just playing around with camera and camera technology led me to where i am in technology i'm a part of this organization called tech lamert and i'm from and live in the crenshaw area and a uh, shout out to Insecure because at the Black hey. Party, Tech Lamert was represented. We were yes. a part of that. Um, just being able to be around a, bun a, a group of Black technologists and creatives who really, you know, we throw a lot of things at the wall. We're always trying to create and come up with things that can exist in the metaverse, in the future, Afrofuturism. But the best part about it is that when we come up with things, we come up with unique ways to meet our people where they're at. Mm -hmm. on the ground so we're always trying to introduce headsets we're bringing headsets out to to Lamert Park we're putting everybody in headsets and we're seeing some of that like original like what is this how does this work what does this do and we're putting like black content in these headsets and it's really inspiring because I think that that's one of the things that we have to do is meet our people where they're at introduce them yep. however however it takes introduce them to the technology and then mm -hmm. watch their uh inquisitiveness and their creativity start to spark from there. And then that inspires us to say like, okay, we can do more, we can start creating more and creating bigger and taking some of these stories, Jay, to your point, Marcus Garvey and building these worlds. And then our people are now ready to receive that type of creativity and content because they've been introduced. So, I mean, we're doing things like incubators, mm -hmm. Like I'm a sneaker head. I love sneakers. So like we're creating 3D sneaker models. We're putting them in stores in the community. So where you can go and you can see in like a, a AR version of a sneaker when you walk into uh, a store. And, th and again, that's all meeting our people where they're at. It's a simple, yeah. 
you know, QR code and then like this sneaker pops up that they love. So, you know, yeah. it's it's definitely been a, a wild ride for me to be able to create some beautiful things in this technology, but then bring it to the ground, bring it to the people where they are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Can I ask a quick question? E e yeah. And this may be this obviously might be slightly off topic, but in the kind of way in a way I feel like it's on topic. I think one of the things that we all know uh, outside of the metaverse in the world that we walk around in, in every day is that like one of the building blocks to wealth is often property and owning property, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I have heard like, well, how, how are people, how do we as a community own a piece of, like what are the steps that one takes to own something in the metaverse or to build something in the metaverse? This probably is gonna be somewhat of an unsatisfactory answer, but like, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I mean it's, it's a great question, but I think, <clears throat> In a virtual world, whether a piece of land is going to be worth something today or 10 years from now just seems so highly speculative mm -hmm. that I would feel uncomfortable telling yeah. our people to go rush and buy land in blackplanet.com metaverse <laughs> for 10 years from now. And then it's like, yo, email. But, but Jay, this is, what I, this is what I will say. And this goes back to, to my earlier point. I love what Paris was just talking about, which is when you can meet our people where they're at. Mm -hmm. And back to this notion of arming them with the tools and the technology to build. That's mm -hmm. how you own, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Can I put a, can I put a plug though, Daniel? Because Jay said yeah. something a little while ago that I'm hope doesn't get lost because I think it's the right mindset for folks who are asking themselves the question right now of how to use this technology, which is mm. once you get access to the technology, we normally just want to port our last era of innovation or last technology platforms experiences to the new platform. But where the real innovation happens, Jay, back to where the real like value gets created and captured is when you find some interesting things that you could not do on old platforms that you can do on new on these new platforms. Exactly. Right. Okay. A, a good example is if you if 07 mobile phones, think about those early days, everyone just took essentially what was off the big 10, 10 foot device and started to put it on our mobile devices. But now you have short form video, right? Designed mm -hmm. for a mobile first experience mm -hmm. that's taking off in ways that we have never seen before. TikTok, Reels and Instagram stories, like that was the medium, that was the primitive that took off because it was native to the platform that was now ubiquitous and that billions of people had in their pocket. Mm -hmm. So as like creatives and people who are thinking about how to leverage this technology, it's great to kind of take the old school experiences and figure out how to do them here because they will feel fresh, they will feel different, they will be fairly unique. But I think the real push and the steer that I would have for anyone who's creative would be, what are the things that I can do? Because Jay said this, he's like, what are the, what are the experiences that I can mm -hmm. have in this virtual world that I couldn't have had before this has actually existed? And that's where I think the real breakthroughs and the real breakthroughs for innovation happen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good point. Good point. That, come, come on, Ime. You've been bringing you know. it all day. <laughs> <laughs> Vivian, is there anything else that we should make people make sure that folks are excited about when it comes to this VR technology? Honestly, I think I keep going back to the notion of meeting people where they're at, uh, regardless of where they're from and who they are. And I think when you dive deeper into diverse cultures, um, it really is about the flavor um, and the dynamic of culture. So we're in a, you know, we're talking about advanced technology, but for me, I'm like, how do we really embed real culture? How do we explore mm -hmm. that? The, the conversation is about culture to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, identity and heritage. And it's also about like fun pop culture and what's happening mm -hmm. across platforms. And so like, I think this group here, we've had so many, uh, you know, fun points made about how we dive into that. It doesn't matter what you attempt to build or whatever. It's just that the culture is you. We are, we are who we are and what we inherently build and create will be a representation of who we are. So I think it's just an exploration. Like it's time for us to like, just have fun with it, build like Gabe is building and try things and go up in the studio um, and just try <laughs> to see what we can do as, as creators to stay motivated and stay, you know, inspired. I, I will say to, to Vivian's point, like one of the, you know, in creating in protest, what we did, um, it's a 14 episode series for Oculus. And one of the best moments that I had, one of the episodes was about uprisings in Los Angeles. Mm. And, uh, Three generations. Mm. So my grandmother, my mother, and myself That's in 92. So 
mm-hmm. myself in 2020, my grandmother and Watts riots. Mm-hmm. And the best wow. part about that whole thing was actually putting my 91 year old grandmother in a headset. Mm-hmm. And, I love it. And, mm-hmm. and letting her experience mm-hmm. uh, the entire series of in protest, but her particular episode in 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 that space. And wow. it was it was a little difficult at first, but once she was in there, she her mind was blown away. Yeah. And then we showed her video of her in the headset at her birthday party, and all of her older friends were so like, "So cute! I need to know about how to do this." What is this? <laughs> So oh, see, yeah, you you got it. You're an influencer for the for yeah. the culture. <laughs> but it is it is culture. Just that you know, everyone can see themselves in this space using these tools and using this technology, and they can experience you know, uh, us who are in this a lot, and we understand it. And we understand the benefits what uh, immersive content can do for empathy and experience. Mm-hmm. But for having everyone to be able to experience that is is key. It's it's primo. So love that. I love so that. Bad. That is yeah. such a dope yeah, experience dope. to be able to do that cross generations. I think you, Jay, when you were mentioning that about you know going back in time and showing the, and showcasing this stuff, Gabe's world, it really lets us just make things timeless in a whole That's different a way. Yeah, I love that so yeah. much. I'm so enamored with this. I'm excited. I'm glad that y'all were all able to join us today for this panel discussion this metaverse culture series like vivian said is the first look at you making black history the (laughs) first of many will not be the last there is so much more that meta has planned for this world and and for these experiences so i can't wait to see what else we we get to do 